we've come a long way when Conrad joined us. Um, some people questioned what I saw, what I didn't see. Um, he's a champion through and through. And uh, anybody that doubted it in the beginning, they certainly don't doubt it now. We'd had three really good seasons with Tommy and um, a lot of success. And when it became apparent that Tommy wasn't going to be with us for financial reasons, really, you kind of all of a sudden you start looking around and you think, Honda are a winning company, where do we go now? And, you know, Conrad obviously is a multi 250 champion. We knew he was out of age uh, with the 250 class. So it was an obvious choice for us to look at Conrad. We rode the bike. As soon as he rode the bike, I knew he's the one. But it was a difficult manoeuvre in the beginning to get him actually agreed and signed. But I think in that period, it kind of, I didn't really know Con, didn't really know the mechanism around him. And if I'm really honest, when I first started with Tommy, I didn't really understand Tommy either. Um, and it took a while, it took six, seven, eight months to really understand what Tommy was. So I knew that when we'd done the deal with Con, a great rider, but I didn't really know him. And then he comes to me with a little plan about arena cross. Dave, I think it'd be a great idea. <clears throat> get some time on the bike, get some time behind the start. From our side, great exposure for Honda, great exposure for the team. Um, but he had no history there. And when Matt told us that it was going to be British only, then all of a sudden that changed the landscape a little bit. So I thought, yep, let's give it a go. So we through Ryan, Will and Rob, we started our winter test program. <clears throat> and this is where I really started to learn about um, Conrad because he literally packed up and went off to Spain. Um, and we did a little bit of testing down there. Uh, and then the team come back, he stayed on. He rode and he rode and he rode and he rode. In essence, I quickly learned that he probably rides five days out of seven. Um, he is, uh, hugely motivated to reach his goal and his goal was to be British champion and you know we started arena cross he started steadily and in his own words you'll probably say he started a little bit cautiously because he didn't really understand it didn't really see how it works but by the end you know he was amazing um, as he always does you know he has this little bit of a little bit of wanting to be perfect all the time and sometimes it's quite hard for him because he's hard on himself um, and when he's hard on himself it, it's difficult to understand how he thinks because he really does take it all on his shoulders when he feels that he hasn't performed to the best he can and domestically <clears throat> when he gets beat it's not because someone's beating him it's because he's not performed as best he can that's the mentality of him. And it really did take me, when we got through Arena Cross, it took me a little while to really understand him. Um, but after Arena Cross, we went to the first British, um, and you know, that was a difficult race for everybody in the paddock. The weather didn't play into the hands to promote a good race. It was a survival race. My words to Conrad were, we can't win it here, but we can lose it. You know, it's just being in the mix. It is what it is. The team done a fantastic job. Um, we came away fit and healthy. The track caught a lot of guys out today. Um, so yeah, we're, we're certainly in the, in the fight for the title in round one. So um, 
ready for the season ahead. He rode solid, but in his words, Dave, that's not me out there. You know, I didn't feel I rode very well. He, he then went to Belgium straight after it, and he rode and he rode and he rode, and he come back for the MX Nationals, and then boom. That's when we really saw the Conrad that we now know. Yeah, awesome day. Um, yeah, the, this is what uh, this should have been last weekend, really. Um, we made a lot of changes this week to the bike for the start, and um, yeah, as you can see, it was incredible. Um, nearly had two whole shots. 1-1, um, one, one, first MX Nationals. So uh, yeah, no, awesome day. Track was amazing. Track was so technical, um, rutty, bumpy. I loved every bit of it. This, uh, for, this was one of the hardest tracks I've, I've ever rode by far. Um, the pace was quite high. You were jumping into quite a lot of the ruts. It was rutty, boggy. Um, it was gnarly. So at that point, um, after the MX Nationals, I said to Ryan, once he gets a full head of steam, he will be a difficult animal for everybody in the paddock to beat. Because I could see the focus, you know. He's one of these riders that he's not scared to invest in his own destiny. You know, he will go to Belgium out of his own money. He won't ask us for that. All he asks us for is the support of parts and bikes, and he, he really does push himself to the very edge every time. So really, the British Championship kind of started off solid, but not amazing in Conrad's eyes. But for the team, we felt, right, we're in it. We're in it. It's, uh, we're in a good place. The bike had started to evolve then. Ryan had <clears throat> started to do a little bit more testing with Conrad. Um, the whole effort of the team started to really take shape with the engine, how he wanted it, how he didn't want it, wanted a bit more, a bit less. It wasn't massively different. Um, there was little changes. So really, when you look at the bike as a whole, we had two good years of development with Tommy, had a lot of great feedback. So actually, we, Con was entering on a bike that was already on a good level. And at that point, it was just making it so that it fitted into what he wanted. Um, and Ryan, um, in the workshop, you know, he's really good at listening, understanding, and just trying to come up with a package that is gonna suit. Really, over the first couple of British rounds, that's really where it was. It was just getting that fine tuning in. You know, Ryan uh, obviously watches like we all do, and he can also try and interpret what he wants from what he sees. So there's a combi there between the both of them. That's when I kind of think I and the team really started to understand how he, how he operates because he is a tight, tight-knit group. You know, he's got Meg, he's got his dad, his mum, his nan and his granddad. There is a very tight-knit family there. And um, you, you start to understand that actually Con, he wants perfection every single week and in motocross that's quite a difficult thing to sit on your shoulder because you don't see him make mistakes very often he is very articulate on the bike he's very precise on the bike but when you actually see how it all works behind the scenes you kind of get to understand how he thinks and how it's been for quite some time within his bubble and i think for me and the team as as one it's it was just starting to really get what he wants out of all of this and understand when he's at a second, he looks like he's at a tenth. Um, I can remember having a conversation with him at Ling. You know, he rode really solid at Ling, but he didn't win. Um, probably made it a little bit worse that his teammate beat him. But I remember going over to see him after the race and he had the longest, saddest face on that I'd seen. I said, Con, what's the matter? He said, oh, I, was, I was rubbish, Dave. Well, it's not strictly too, Con. You rode really well. Yeah, but I should have. I said, yeah, but we all should have, could have, would have. I said, maybe we should walk over to Tommy's awning because Tommy had a tough day in the office. That's when we've got a sad face on, when the championship is just disappearing. Right now, 
we're in it. We are in that bubble and you can win this, but you've got to take these days on the chin. He's like, yeah, I know, but it's not easy. I get it. And that's, you know, that, that relationship between rider and team, you, you've got to understand how everybody works. And I certainly, from Ling onwards, I understood that unless he won, nothing would be good enough. But he is super critical of himself inside. Um, his dad especially is very critical of him in a good way because he only wants better for his son. But it creates that bit more pressure on Con in terms of I want to get it perfect, I want to win. I always say five, six, seven, eight seconds up the track, that's enough. But his mentality is he wants to win by 35 seconds. And um, it is a different animal for me to be around because I've always wanted to do a job and do it enough. Tommy always managed the situation, got a gap and managed it. But Con gets a gap and just wants to keep going. I do understand how he thinks now. And for me as a person, that is really critical that I understand my rider. I don't ever see Con hang out. Everything is 100% in his world. There's not 101, there's not a 99. 100% and he always finds the edge when he needs to domestically without any shadow of a doubt if he needs to find the edge and the track allows he can find an edge and he has that ability in his head and in his heart the times that he gets frustrated and you know we the spread of riders now there's a lot of good riders some of the tracks, the older school tracks, the way they develop on the day, passing is not easy. And the frustration that I see in him sometimes, because um, he generally pulls back, works it out, then he goes. It's very methodical, but he's got it sorted. But when he gets frustrated is when he, the opportunities are not there because the track doesn't allow three or four lines to have a go, to get up the inside, to go outside, to cut back in. Unfortunately, the development of a lot of the tracks now, they tend to be a little bit one-liney. And I see the frustration in him then when he's racing. Um, but you give him a clear track, you give him a clear little bit ahead of steam, um, that's really when Conrad Muse is in his element. Yeah, Fox Hills was frustrating for him because um, obviously Jeffrey was there. Josh rode out of his skin in the first race. Um, I could see both of them actually got arm pump in the race, but I could see that Con, uh, in his mind, second race, I'm going to be ready. And of course, for sad reasons, the second race never come. So that was a particularly frustrating day for him because I think he really wanted to show people that actually I could probably run with Jeffrey for certainly most of the race, if not all of it. but for different reasons in the first race. Both of them tightened up um, because Jeffrey dragged them along and they went with him. So the Fox Hills one was, I think in his head, it was a frustration because he was ready for the second race, but because the second race never come. No, and that was playing on his shoulders, I think, a little bit, you know, people were saying, well, you only need one race yet, Con. As a team, we're trying to say, actually, it doesn't matter. We're in it. We are there. We're in the fight for the championship. Um, but I know in his mind, he, he wants to win, he wants to win races. And as much as we all try and say it's about September that counts, he wanted to win races. And once he did win a race, that sort of monkey was off his back. And then he just seemed to relax a little bit more. The Black Soul race for him, he rode well.
today. Uh, first in qualifying, two moto wins. Um, yeah, great day and the red plate to top it off. So uh, over the moon with that. I had two solid races. I felt like I was really smart today, took my time. Um, I kind of took the races differently to what I ever have done before. So it's been, uh, it's been an awesome learning day for me. He always says to us in the beginning and again, it took a while to get our head round. I want to go to Belgium. Why do you want to go to Belgium? There's less and less tracks in Belgium, Con. There's a lot more tracks we can get on here. I want to ride with the best riders. So he's friends with um, Prada. He's friends with a few of the other top riders. And he rides with them. And in his mind, he's riding with the best riders in the world in the week. And it gives him a lift. Because all of a sudden he's hanging around, he's in that mix, he's going the same sort of speed. So he comes back fresh and focused. And I get it now. I totally, totally get it. But after Black Saw, he won Black Saw, rode really well. When he went to Hawkstone, for me, there's not many people that I've seen ride around Hawkstone like he did. quite exceptional and I think that's because of going to Belgium riding on the tough rough rough tracks because a lot of the time in the UK one of our biggest problems is everybody wants to track flat and actually the reality is the real world in racing it's not like that the benefit he has going to Holland and Belgium is that a lot of the tracks are rough already and that's how they roll and he treats it, you know, his, his physical capacity, I don't think anybody is anywhere near his level on fitness. He's so dedicated. You know, we used to, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but he wears a ring on his finger. And that ring tells his trainer everything when he wakes up. It just when he rides, it gives a feedback. He just logs in and sends it back. And as a team in the beginning, Rai used to joke with me, if he ever takes that ring off, can you throw it away? Because it determines when he rides, how he rides, what happens. And, and it was a little in-house private joke. But in the end, the joke was on us because he stuck with his programme. And I don't think there's a fitter guy in the UK than Conrad News. He, he can twist that throttle as long and as fast as anybody. I'm really surprised at his track craft. He's quite happy to make a safe start, occasionally a whole shot, but he's happy to make a safe start because in his mind he knows he's quicker than everybody. And at that point, that track craft over those first few laps are amazing. And that is really impressive from my side of the fence. As an ex-rider, you see how he watches, reads it. He anticipates and reads lines that other people often don't even see. So from my side, that is one of his biggest attributes, is the way he can come through at speed. Um, the negative is the mindset of, well, I'll just get around this first corner safely and then I'll go. But of course, every now and then, someone will get away at the front and by the time he gets into second, they've gapped him and then that is a hard scenario to break down. But Hawkstone Park, for me, he was nothing short of 11 out of 10. The way he rode our bike round there, the way he performed, he, he made it look easy. And anyone that's ridden Hawkstone knows that it ain't easy. Take my hat off to both of them, Josh and Conrad. Um, they've been really good with one another, they've been very fair away from the track. They probably, Conrad in particular, doesn't probably push to ride with Josh. He'd rather ride away from him. Um, but. They've been complete professionals for the team and Honda. They've been very fair with one another on the track. Yeah, you could argue they've pushed one another on, but actually I think um, 
the way their bikes are, the way the 450 is, I think it's allowed them to push on because the CRF 450 is the best bike. It's, uh, it's the complete package, engine, chassis, the whole thing. So I think it has allowed them both to push on. They went head to head at Schoolhouse. Um, anyone was there was watching, it was a great race. Conrad was probably a little bit faster on the day. He waited, he watched and he watched and he watched and it wasn't an easy track to pass on. He worked out where he could do it. I kind of thought he'd blown it because I see him have a little look the lap before, I thought Josh would twig it. Um, but then the next lap he went just sort of rode around the outside of him and then he was gone. Um, but that really was two teammates head to head Completely fair, Conrad passed Josh once, Josh went back at him, passed him again. And as a team manager in a team, that's all you can ask for. Two riders give 100%, but are very fair with one another. Rob and uh, Conrad work quite well together on the race. And Rob is, is a very um, experienced mechanic. And, you know, words mean a lot to riders. Um, should we try this? Should we try that? do a little bit here, a little bit there, and it is the little, but in a rider's head, they're making progress. And sometimes it might be something to do with Connie, it might be to do with the bike, it could be a little tweak on the suspension, it could be anything, but psychologically, that rider-mechanic relationship is key because Rob gelled with Conrad very early in that relationship, and you, I could see it from afar, and that relationship is key. I, I'm not always sure what I bring to the party, really. Um, I, I don't say a lot to anybody. I tend to watch, and if I feel like there's something to talk about, I will always talk about it. Um, I think I've said it numerous times, I never get offended if people don't take it on on it. Um, if I see lines, I see opportunities, or something developing that maybe they've not seen, I'll always bring it up. Um, there has been times with either one of them where they've used something that I said that will probably work in a race. So if you don't make a start, this might work to come back and make things happen because it's just a fresh set of eyes for them. I like to walk a track or walk all the way around it if I can, um, just so that I have a real different idea of what they're looking at. Because from where they're going, I don't have that vision. I'm looking at it from a different angle. Motocross is one of the hardest sports out there and to do it as they do, which is very impressive, to have a small contribution to that is great for me. And I know the bigger contribution is Ryan, Will and Rob because they're right in the thick of it all the time. But that's what a team's all about, you know. They've got someone like me that actually has been around the block a few times. They've got Rye that is hands-on with all the engine. They've got two brilliant mechanics that just focus on their own rider and understand their rider and that's what makes us the package really. You know, at the end of the day we're a little team in Devon that thankfully is supported by Honda UK and many other great partners and that is a really a key.
was in quite a lot of pain coming into the race. Uh, had a small fracture to my coccyx four weeks ago before cusses. So that was sore. I've been trying to recover from that and then just was sat a bit awkward on the bike to try and protect the coccyx in the week in Belgium and had another big crash and hurt my ribs. So uh, honestly, it's been a tough week. It's been a tough few weeks. It's been like, oh, I just want to get to these races now. I just want to race. And first race, I had an okay start um, and then just kind of rode my own race, rode steady. Um, didn't want to push too hard. And then uh, second race, just wanted to do the same again, get a good start and, uh, and just do enough really, just do what I needed to do. And, Keep myself out of trouble and uh, yeah, things like that. So, but unfortunately, it didn't quite go that way. And I went down on the start and had to come from last. So, uh, yeah, I was picking myself up off the ground, thinking it's now or never. I got to come back from this. So, uh, we managed to. It was good. Took the one lap board, got to the top of the hill, and come out of the turn, and the bike just come out of my hands. And uh, that was it. Monticelli went by, and I was like, ah, oh, I've done all this work, and now I've finished second. I, uh, yeah, couldn't believe it, but. Uh, I'm going to get myself back to 100% and uh, yeah, we've got one more championship to, to wrap up next week so we're uh, full focus this week, we don't take our eye off the ball yet and uh, we'll come out swinging next weekend and hopefully wrap that title up. Still sinking in. Yeah, 2023 British MX1 champion. It's amazing. It's uh, two for two in the UK. That's so cool, honestly. We uh, yeah crashed a couple of times in the first race when the downpour came. Um, I was closing it, closing in on the leaders quite nice, and uh, I had some good pace going. Then the downpour came, and I thought I don't want to take no risks. It was so heavy, such heavy rain, and I just thought I just want to bring this one home. And uh, yeah, just eased off a bit and had two silly crashes and uh, yeah, got beat up quite a bit. But um, I was determined for the second race. Um, I think all I had to do was finish, um, but I was determined to go out on a win. And uh, we got a solid start and we rode our own race and the bike was absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, we come away with a win and uh, won the championship. So uh, I'm over the moon. I, I honestly can't believe it. The team have been absolutely fantastic all year. This is honestly a dream team for me. This is. Uh, they're amazing, the bike's incredible, all the mechanics, they do such a good job. Um, they do so much behind the scenes that you honestly don't even see and uh, without them guys' work, honestly, I, I'd, I'd be nowhere. So I appreciate them a lot and uh, my girlfriend also, my family. Um, it's just nice to have everyone here on this special day. Uh, for Con, 
it means a lot because I know he's proud to be a British champion. But for us as a team, you know, when you look at, um, you look at Honda um, and our partners and the investment that everybody puts in, it's, uh, there is a certain amount of undercurrent pressure to perform week in and week out. Someone once said to me, um, Honda don't go to the races to make the numbers up, they go there to win. And that's really stuck in my mind. They are a winning company. They do give a lot of investment into their team. And at the end of the day, they expect results.